Hello, Space Monkeys. Olivia here of Oz9. I've been listening to a show called The Sprouting recently, an actual play podcast that launched January of 2024. And frankly, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed that the characters on this show are not only fun and interesting, but they generally make quite good decisions. Even if you don't normally listen to actual play, you really should check out The Sprouting. It has amazing music, fabulous immersive sound effects, delightful characters, and some really great storytelling. The Sprouting releases new episodes at the end of every month, so get used to crossing off the days on your calendar to the next one. Oh yeah, they're fighting plants, which might seem familiar if you listen to Oz9, but they're clever about it, which won't. Stay tuned for a sample of their show, then search for and subscribe to The Sprouting any way you listen to podcasts. Welcome to The Sprouting, a Call of Cthulhu actual play set in an eldritch-infused plant post-apocalypse. I'm the story keeper of Londa, and this is just to let you know that this is a supercut of the first two episodes. Enough to give you a taste of the world that we're surviving in. I mean building. <laughs> uh, the full versions are available wherever you get your podcasts. Enjoy! This world used to be like your world. In fact, it was your world until a couple of hundred years ago. Sorry about that. Some similarities, but mostly differences. The land, the technology, the people, the politics, the language, the eldritch plants. <laughs> the people of our tale are attempting to survive in a world where mystical plants have taken over, where eldritch bargains twist the fabric of reality, where each has a goal beyond just surviving. But when the elders come to mortal dwellings, it distorts the mind with its inability to be perceived. So, can they trust their senses or must they learn to trust each other? I guess you're about to find out. This is The Sprouting. Chapter 1, The Meeting of Souls, Part 1 The year is 80 after sprouting, or 2100 if you prefer. In the vine-strangled graveyard of humanity's scarification of the world, we find few survivors, some banding together for safety and comfort, others braving the unpredictable wilds alone. I start this story within a region known locally as the Cradle. Generally speaking, the vast Alps to the north and west, the ocean to the east and the dangerous mountains, hills and crevasses to the south have managed to isolate this expanse of land. Small vestiges of civilization are dotted around, providing small havens for the living. One type of haven is the difficult to get into burrows. Small bunkers, dwellings, underground shelters that were created before the sprouting to protect the important people, items and knowledge of humanity before its downfall. And it is in pursuit of one such burrow that our story really begins, with the meeting of four souls. We find ourselves at a gas station. It's broken, decrepit. There was no roof to start with, but all the fuel pumps are broken or covered in vines or plants or just simply removed. Nobody knows how, nobody knows why, but that's not relevant right now. Inside the gas station itself, part of the roof has collapsed and it's not doing too well, but it does provide shelter for a young man. This young man wakes and stretches and looks out the window. Amongst all the rubble and ruin, the rusted cars and the pieces of concrete that are broken, he sees an older man. Aethel, who are you and what do you look like? Hello. My name is Aethel, and I'm going to be playing Sully. Uh, so, uh, Sully's standing there in the middle of the road, looking kind of unkempt, uh, because it's been a while since he's had a safe place to stay. He stands kind of average height, but uh, you can tell by just looking at him that he is quite old, and that he's been, like, his skin has taken on that kind of orange leathery look that, like, farmers get in their old age. Yeah, um, I'm... Make me a listen check for me, please. Oh, no, I'm bad at listen. Why am I bad at listen? All right. Uh, That's a 37 on a 20 roll, so fail. Okay. You, You arrived maybe an hour or so ago. 
You actually found the young man who's now looking at you. Um, you found him asleep, surrounded by some gear. You had a rifle with him. But young kids, probably not worth interfering with, and you might as well just get on with what you need to be here for. Scanning and looking around, um, you see that there is... You can see that kind of you're on a hill, sort of, um, and you can see that as you look down the hill, there is this very large still lake ahead of you. It's not rippling, it's not moving, it's not affected. Um, It's a quite clear day, that kind of like really cold spring day where kind of nothing is moving, it's kind of cold, but if you're in the right part of of the sun, mm, it's it's just kind of of warm. It's, It's an okay day. Looking off to the side of the still lake that is ahead of you, you can see there is kind of this large like cliff face, this kind of large mountain off to one side. It's a little far off. And you can see that there are trees all around. Everything is genuinely calm and peaceful. As you kind of look around, you don't really hear anything. You don't hear the guy who is in the gas station moving around. You, you didn't pick that up. Maybe old ears, maybe you're distracted by sometimes the genuine beauty that can be this world. As you are looking around and you look up, you see what looks like this very small electrical device that seems to be like flying in the air. There's like, as you look at it, you can almost make out the sound of the humming, but maybe that's just imaginations, associations. You've seen drones here and there before, but not many. You see that it flies high and travels off, circles round and heads off in a different direction. We're going to stick with the drone. As the drone flies back to where it came from, it slowly descends on a road, not too far from where the gas station is. And it lands very close to Neil. Do you want to tell us who you are and what you look like? I'm Ralph. In contrast to your very weathered complexion, he does not have... A very weathered complexion. <laughs> he has <laughs> he, a very sheltered skin look, vaguely tanned, but not to the extreme. He has uh, short auburn hair that's kind of stuck up, uh, partially due to the VR headset that's currently on his eyes. But it, when he pulls it up, it kind of sticks his hair up a little bit. And so it kind of naturally always is lifted. Oh, I love that. I love um, that. Yeah. The VR headset in this <laughs> Very world, relatable. Are kind of, they're kind of more akin to um, like goggles for snow stuff than mm-hmm. a bulky VR headsets that we know today. So if you imagine like a, a, a snow goggles lifted up, that's kind of what it looks like most of the time. And uh, on his wrist, there is a connected to all this, connected to the backpack is a um, small little wrist device that looks to be some kind of computer interface um, on his left wrist. Behind that are a couple strange tattoo-looking things. The drone, which I believe you have called OT? Yes. It has it has um, feathers tucked underneath the solar panels. It's kind of decorated a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Along with the birds aren't real sticker. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It also has, uh, for the astute among you, it also has um, Appleson like stamps under its (laughs) underside, um, which in this world is a very well-known electronics company, at least before the sprouting. The drone kind of hovers nearby and catches up with you. You can actually see the gas station um, a little bit further along the road um, between some rusted out cars and you think you make out the shape of a, of a gentleman um, sort of in that clearing area. Um, the drone kind of hovers next to you and Oti says, The lake is ahead. There is a road that leads to a chain link fence with a small building. Perhaps 30 minutes from the gas station. The old man is waiting at the gas station. Are you sure we can trust him? Um, he shrugs, and how does he grab his, how does he gather his drone? Um, it could very easily just, like, hook to your backpack when it's not in flight. Yeah, he does that and uh, snaps it to his backpack. Um, and as you continue walking down the road, yeah, you see the kind of older gentleman. Could you roll a spot hidden for me, please, um, Ralph? I'm going to see you. 
65 versus 50, so that's a nope. Cool. Yeah, you see a slightly older man ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> you too do not spot the young man who's looking out the window as you approach. <laughs> we suck. You um, suck. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. I do believe uh, you agreed to this, V. Uh, Sully has two guns on him. Uh, <laughs> one... Uh, Sorry. I genuinely forgot to mention my weapons. When you said your pistol, I, I was like, I do think oh. you agreed, V. I have five guns. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so like, kind of tucked away, like in, uh, like attached to his backpack is a rifle, but more like ready to be grabbed is a shotgun that he has kind of slung across his shoulders. Uh, so yeah, uh, if once Sully like makes eye contact with you, he just waves a little bit, and you see he's like kind of stiffens up. Uh, and if you've had any human experience, you know this is a sign of like, all right, uh, do it yourself. <laughs> like he, he's quite nervous or like unsure of the interaction about to come. Yeah, um, Ralph's a bit a bit the same. He always has his like gun very visible in his open jacket, but his his hand is nowhere near it at the moment. Uh, he just kind of waves. How are you, pal? Ah, what's your name? Hey, uh, I'm Sully. I'm assuming you're Ralph. You are who I was looking for, then. It's, you are Ralph, right? You're not somebody looking for me, are you? We've worked before uh, on a couple of things, eh? But I, I think we were uh, doing kind of distance things, eh? Yeah, uh, this is, it's actually very nice. It's very nice to put a face to the name. Uh, you can see that right. uh, Sully clearly like is relaxing, knowing that you are who he was expecting. <laughs> yeah, uh, he he and... he's lightens up a bit and walks closer and reaches out a hand for a handshake. Could I get you both to please roll a listen check? Oh man, are you better those two? So I needed to roll <laughs> under twenty, and I rolled a seventy-four. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's the same here. I was, I failed. Yeah. I've got my AirPod, AirPods in. <laughs> Copyright. Oh. I've got <laughs> You've got Apple Seen Pods. <laughs> Apple yeah, Apple Seen Pods. Pods, yeah. Yeah. Any electrical device, if we're not sure, it belongs to Apple Seen. Um, okay. I'm going to freeze you two right there because you don't hear any of the lead up to the big thing that's about to happen. Spoilers. And then a bear mauls you. <laughs> Um, further up the hill away from this gas station experience that is happening there are two people who are moving at speed they are dodging through the trees they are weaving their way through rusted old wrecks of cars and bikes one of them is an older gentleman who looks to be wearing some sort of cowboy hat and a long leather jacket. He definitely looks old. He's not young, but he's moving as if he's a very young spry man. Travelling next to this older gentleman, trying to get away from whatever it is they're getting away from. Kesir, do you want to describe what your name is and who you are? Uh, the, the name of my character is Lark. And they are a uh, early to mid teenage kid with bronze tan skin, short dark hair, uh, with no apparent gender and Asian facial features. They are of medium height and lanky looking and uh, thin as if from minimal malnourishment, just enough to keep them going. Um, the older gentleman you know to be someone that you've known for a very long time, actually. Um, you know, this gentleman's name is Roland. Um and currently, as you are both kind of like dodging and making your way down through these wrecks of cars and through the forest, um, you kind of like look down the hill and you can see that on the right hand side there is this, you would know it to be a gas station. People have told you what that is, but you may not necessarily know what that is. You just know that that's what it's called. And dead ahead of you, you can see this very large still lake. Um, and you think maybe in your running down that you can maybe spot that there are two people but there's some distance off um, as you're kind of like running down 
you hear the very telltale signs of creatures that are following you, plants that you are very well aware of as you hear this tick, 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 as you also hear the slithering of roots and branches across the ground. Roland turns to you um, as you're running and he says... All right, <clears throat> I have a plan. What's the plan? You, you keep going. There's people down there at the gas station and I think I recognize one of them. Just tell them, just tell them you know Roland. Ah, there's one. And he, he points at this kind of much more shiny, small looking vehicle um, that has like two wheels, um, has like a very big like um, handlebar and he runs towards it and he says, I'm going to take this and draw as many of them as I can away from you. Hopefully they'll follow me and not you. I'll meet up with you in the dreamscape, or fate will mean we meet up again. Just go where safety is. If that man is who I think it is, you'll be fine. Uh, Luck doesn't say anything, just nods and uh, looks forward towards the people and uh, like keeps running. And like it uh, keeps a listen back to hear if Roland manages to get the the, the, the thing. If there's another noise coming from the back, um, they will look <laughs> behind uh, to see if they are fo- if the, 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 the things are following him. Um, yeah, like uh, like you've probably run like 10, 15 seconds when you hear <laughs> as you hear this like whatever engine it is beginning to kick into gear and you hear it like begin to shoot away and you begin to hear him shouting um, definitely trying to get as much attention as he can like he's hitting whatever cars he's passing literally making as much noise as he can which if you are someone who is vague listen skilled you probably would have heard but alas um, <laughs> only some people are gifted in certain listen skills um, and you begin to pelt your way down towards where this kind of gas station is um and you can see these two people have kind of a little bit ahead of you that they are kind of like reaching out and shaking hands um, or at least they're about to um, and as you run down I'd like you to make a spot hidden check please um, yep hang on please for the love of God <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a success yep success fantastic um as you become like running down um you hear like most of the ticking begin to fade but as you kind of like get towards the edge of where this gas station is where this kind of building that has mostly collapsed is um you hear the ticking like off to the right hand side in in the tree line and you spot this person you spot their face at the window you see them lift a rifle in the direction of where you're running and all three of you hear this massive loud gunshot for the two of you who are shaking hands you hear it from behind you Lark you see this kind of flash in the window as it shatters and breaks and you hear this kind of like noise coming as you look back and you see that this hollow crest this large red like bulbous looking plant that's running on many many like roots and vines as it runs towards you you see this explosion you see a big portion of its middle section just blow out and you see it be kind of like scuttle backwards into the forest itself and you lose it from sight what do the three of you want to do well i'm assuming as soon as the explosion goes off um sully <laughs> they hear is nothing like, <laughs> <laughs> sully is within a half a second he has this shotgun in his hand it's braced against his shoulder and he's aiming it at wherever the sound came from like uh, it's coming from like the other side of the uh, the gas station, um, and you see this like yeah, you see this young uh, Filipino Asian person just running down the road in your general direction. <laughs> All right, uh, you say young. How young are we talking? Probably mid teenager. Yeah, oh, as early to mid teenagers. Yeah, I think uh, Sully's just training a sh- uh, shotgun like straight at the the, the person. At me? <laughs> yeah, straight at you. <laughs> you're a giant loud bang, and uh, and then you're running at him like got, got his gun up, and he's just aiming it at you, just staring at you, seeing what you're gonna do next. Oh, they're they're running, and they're like um, they're they're looking behind them because they also just heard the explosion. And they look back <laughs> forwards to see the, the gun aimed at them. And they're, they're just jumping behind whatever the fuck they can find, like on like in front like some kind of obstacle that can can hide like, them. Like a gas pump or something. Yeah, something. <laughs> yeah, like a, yeah, you can like a gas pump or like a broken piece of like uh, cement that was making up like the foundations is like cracked, broken yeah. up. Like yeah, there's definitely many places that you could be like, oh god, shotgun, jump. Yeah. Um, like you, there's they're, definitely like places for that to you to hide. Yeah, because they they um they don't know if 
what happened behind them just hit the, the, the crest. So they're trying to like gain their bearings and like make sure like, okay, shotgun avoided. Mm-hmm. What's happening behind me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think you jump to cover and like, you, like I'm, I'm assuming like blood rushing to your ears, your heart mm-hmm. thumping and like instantly yeah. you just hear a shout, identify yourself. Uh, they they continue like they they look behind like um in the direction of where the crests were just to make sure that there's no crest because bigger danger. Yeah. Um. You look back and you see that the crest definitely has like a, a big hole in it and it is like scuttling off into the forest. It's like oh no, uh, and like <laughs> eating itself back through the forest. Um. You see other plants um that it's heading towards and you hear the ticking like really really loudly. Um. But it's definitely scuttling away and some of the other plants like literally move out of its way and then form back into like whatever bushy mess they once were. Um. Looking back, you also notice, and uh, Ralph and Sally also would notice if you're kind of looking in any sort of general direction, um, you see a young man um, appear from behind the building and head in like your general direction, having seen um, someone just run past them and knowing that uh, at least someone is, uh, some other people are there. You see that they have um, a rifle and you hear the as they uh, chamber another round. Um, but they don't have it aimed up at you. They have it like pointed at the ground. Um, they just like walk around the corner. Oh boy. Uh, do I hear the... Like was about, about to come out, but now there's two people with guns <laughs> from two different directions. Um, Sully had seen the, the person in the uh, station previously. Yep. Uh, yeah, yep. This, is, this is them. Um, yeah, 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 you definitely recognize them. Like the the gun that they had, like next to them, is what they have in their hands. They're wearing exactly the same stuff. Um, it's like this really like loose shirt, and like uh, they're kind of like wearing sleeping um, underwear. Like they don't have any trousers on. They don't have any shoes on. Um, they don't have anything like that. They literally just had woken up, wandered around, saw someone was in trouble, and fired a bullet. Um, and then like came around the edge when you yelled at someone to identify themselves. Um, but yeah, they have the gun pointed at the ground. They're not like. They're not hostile in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, Lark is gonna peek out, uh, like, and, and and make a point of like looking around back and forth to to make sure that there's no like they're not gonna catch a bullet anytime soon, and they're gonna <laughs> um, put up the hands, uh, like, make sure that um, the people around the corner with the with the trained guns are gonna see them. <laughs> uh. Um, yeah, once Sully sees that like people are de-escalating, he's more than happy to like lower the shotgun. But uh, he's seen this tactic before. Somebody seemingly innocent runs at them asking for help, and yeah, then you get <laughs> then the guns just start flying. Uh, so um, he's yeah. happy to de-escalate at least for now. <laughs> yeah, you can see that he like flicks the safety on and kind of like puts their gun like he tries to like put it in in like a holder on his back, but like he's not wearing anything of any real value. Oh. <laughs> Realizes he's in his underwear, uh, kind of like puts the gun back and just holds it awkwardly at his side. And he says, um, "It's okay, friend. Name's Aster. You? I'm Sully. Um, was that you who shot the gun earlier?" He nods. Yeah, one of them. Anyway, ticky boys that was following your friend. You're right, kiddo. Uh. They nod. Good. They're they're visu- visibly a little bit like uh, still processing everything. <laughs> yeah. Ralph, I need you to make a spot hidden for me, please. Ooh. This is going to be a hard check, so it's not just a normal success you need. You need a hard success. Oh, V. <laughs> <laughs> That's not happening. Why not? Do it, Neil. I My believe walls. in you. <laughs> I couldn't have done worse. Oh, oh boy! Oh. <laughs> oh boy! I rolled a ninety-nine. <laughs> That's so. You see, the like the young person who's like hiding, um, like behind, like let's say a gas pump. Um, you can see them hiding behind the gas pump and just kind of like hands vaguely up, just processing what's going on. You see that Sully is kind of like de-escalating where he's aiming his gun it's no longer like upped and ready to shoot you can see that's kind of aiming it down you can see that he's you can hear that he's talking and you can see that Lark is nodding in response to something but you looking in the area where they're looking it's kind of a blur you can't really 
see a person, it's like a heat haze. It's just, you're having real troubles realizing that somebody is there. You can tell there's something weird, but you can't see them right now. Okay, he's just taking it slow and trying to figure out what's going on. He's still trying to figure out what was shot, I think. (laughs) 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 But guns are being put away, so... Yep. There's a bit you of confusion. You see Sally's like... Yeah. He looks confused. And I think uh, at that point, um, Sully like spots where you ran off to, and he's like, I think it's okay. Uh, and he's going to move towards Lark. Did you identify yourself earlier with name? No. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's just going to move up to the gas pump and kind of lean on it like, you okay? Uh, Lark nods and then says... Do you, Roland, do you know him? Uh, uh, Sully looks up to the other guy and then back down to you. Are you asking if I know a man by the name Roland? They nod. As I know Roland, how do you know him? I was up there with him. He created a distraction. He said, he told me to run down here. He said, he knew one of you. Okay. And? Uh, I'm gonna go put some trousers on. And he just kind of like turns and like awkwardly <laughs> makes his way Is that why back I into. See him? Um, he was censored. You can't. But you, you <laughs> definitely know that there's something going on. You see, yeah, you see like a bird censored version. Um, and you see, you see the door open. And you see it close again, but you, you're really struggling right now to see him. Like, you're aware that someone's going on and, like, you hear a little bit of a muffle, like a, like someone's talking on the other end of the house. You hear like, um, but you, you can't focus on it right now. If I also weren't a coward, I would storm in this building and interrogate this blur man. But I, I don't. <laughs> I, I'm a coward. I'm not scared of it. So, Take off your yeah. Google lenses. They're censoring <laughs> naked people. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, Sully's going to shoulder his shotgun and he's going to lean down. Roland's up in the hills. Yeah, we took... Um, we were running from... The, the crests and he said he was going to create a distraction he took one of and I'm gonna assume that at uh, at the gas station there's more of the uh, motorcycle thingies yeah L- Lark points at one of them and he uh, and they say uh, he, he took one of those and um, moved it and it made a lot of noise yes uh, yes Roland has an operational motorcycle. I don't know how he does it. But I think there may be... I think it's not exactly mechanical experience. I think there's more to it. But that's uh, beside the point. Lark just has get, gets a thousand yard stare and has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's called a motorcycle. Oh, motorcycle. Okay. Like motorboat. Very similar. Uh... Actually, almost exactly the same. Except one is on two wheels and the other one's in the bo- water. You've seen motorboats? I'm going to assume I have. I, I 100% just that up. you've seen yeah, a motorboat, I, I, yeah. I, I, I just remember boats, but I don't remember if it was a rowboat or a motorboat. Um, you, probably yeah. um, with your, your history, you would have known both for sure. Uh, okay, yeah. Yes. I, I, I know motorboats. You can see Sully's like scrunching his face a little bit, uh, thinking to himself, like, no motorboats, never heard of a motorcycle. I know. No. <laughs> very, very specific. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, at that point, um, the, the door to the um, uh, the gas station opens once again. Um, and I would like Ralph to take another spot hidden or a listen check. It's your choice. Spot hidden. Go for it. You don't need a hard this time. You're very aware that there is something there. It's a 53, B. <laughs> no, a 53. Or whatever the fuck. <sighs> yeah, but Neil, already, would you like to use Already? Oh, yeah. Already. 
How do so I do that? So you can use your luck to turn a failure into a success. So you would only need to use three. So for each luck point you use, you lo- lower your roll by one. And to make a skill check, you have to hit your number. You don't have to go underneath it. <laughs> Remove three points from luck. Yep. And then you can turn your spot hidden failure into a success. Okay. I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, now that you have succeeded on your spot hidden, as the door opens, you kind of look very intently and it's like having to squint a lot, but suddenly all of the all of the blurriness, all of the censoring, all the everything that you've seen suddenly begins to clarify. And you see this youngish man with dark hair. Um, he's wearing what looks like a, a kind of a sports jacket, uh, which he has a lot of movement in. Um, you can tell that he's wearing proper trousers. He's wearing shoes, which uh, is only is not even a surprise to you, but to everyone else here now looks dressed. Um, and he has a rifle on his back and he has a, like a side bag. Um, and he appears to be clutching what looks like a small small piece of card in his hands um, and you can't really see what's on it but he's he's at least holding it um, okay. and he comes out and sees all of you hmm. is it normal that that I th- this seems strange that I the, the man was blurry V you know what I mean yes um, is there something so, odd about about Yes, okay. uh, you have never experienced this okay. before. Um, and seeing like a door open and close on its own, like, yeah, it could be the wind, maybe maybe just having a moment. Um, but seeing a man solidify out of this kind of blurriness, it's definitely a little bit of a shock to the system. So I'm going to need you to make a sanity roll, please. Oh, good. Okay. I rolled a 69 nice. versus 55. Yeah, nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so, oh. so I didn't do Last a very nice. good. Nice. But yeah. uh, still a fail. Um, you take three points of sanity damage as you see someone just appear out of nowhere. How much? Three. Jesus. Well, Ralph is just squinting, kind of. He's frozen. He's no longer moving towards everyone. Um, <laughs> still holding his confused look. I'm going to keep watching. <laughs> everyone okay? Did I say something? I'm assuming you are the one who let off the gunshot earlier. Did you hit the crest? Oh, yeah, yeah. I blew a big chunk of that thing out. Saw a thing rung into forest and, and he puts a finger to his ear. Yep, I can't hear it. All right, well, let's hope that you did a fatal shot. Nah, nah, probably not. But I scared it off, at least. Uh, I figure you two know each other. And he points between Ralph and Sully. Um, we've known off each other. Um, what's it to you? Just wondering, uh, uh, any chance any of the three of you local to this area? Do you know anything about it? Uh, Sully shakes his head. I, I wouldn't consider myself local to here. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, I figured as much, but when things are kind of, you know, I travel to nearby <laughs> things, and this is almost nearby. Yeah. It's it's almost nearby, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a solid day and a bit of travel for you. Yeah, I figured I'd ask. Um, yeah, no, he shakes his head. No. Uh, sorry, I I didn't catch your name, kid. Oh, Lark. Hey, Lark. Do you, uh, (laughs) survive or thrive around here? I, um, had a, um, had a friend. I'll meet up with him again later. All right. Balls. And he kind of, like, looks down at kind of, like, the card that he has. Um, When you say card, what do you mean? Can it be a little bit more descriptive? Um, so I, I think during like your rummagings, and all of you would have seen something roughly like this, it's kind of like we would know it's postcard size. Um, and it has like this kind of 
very, very faded picture on the front of like um, a picture of a lake and and like a um, like a picnic bench and like someone just like looking overly happy on the front, but it's super, super faded. Um, and on the back, it has like um, has like something that looks like it's been handwritten, but you can't really see it very well because he's kind of like moving it and twisting it about on his hands, and it looks like it's been well worn as well. Like it's like it's gone through a lot. Are you looking for a kite? Sort of. I, I got these instructions to go to a place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gas station. View of the lake. He points at the lake. Yeah. <laughs> points at the gas station. As soon as he says gas station with a view of a lake, like Sully throws his head over his shoulder and looks back. <laughs> uh, road east leading to chain link fence. Points at a road that looks like it's probably heading east. Um, for those of you that would roughly always know where northeast southwest is i.e. look at the sun um where it rises and sets don't look at the sun <laughs> it's bad don't look at the sun without sunglasses folks um, <laughs> like looks directly into the sun <laughs> slap uh, road head in east some sort of mountain over there and well it says mountain complex but obviously i'm not close enough to the mountain to know yet um yeah i was just uh, i've been told there's a safe place at the end of this list of directions that might have what i'm looking for uh, I think there's like a yeah. Sully looks over to Ralph. And she's like, um, "Does that sound like the place we're going to?" Uh, a safe place, eh? That's what he said. You would hope, I think, but uh, by the sound of it, no. They're looking for security help, and considering they've been there for a while and are just now looking for it, I'm kind of wondering why they're reaching out just now, but... Oh, uh, person that gave me this information, the, uh... I got it three or four days ago. Said that these people were just setting up. Maybe there'd be a place for me. Wait. There are people in the borough. Uh, Sully looks like, kind of, like, annoyed at Ralph. <laughs> He's just kind of, he squints at you like he's confused at your surprise. <laughs> uh, I did not bring a lot to trade. Uh, I did not realize we were meeting with people. I think while you're all having that discussion, like, Lark is just uh, looking for a place to sit and just, just taking uh, random fruit out of the out of their backpacks and just eating it. Uh, uh. <laughs> Wait, what did you want from what did you want from this? What were you out to get? I'm I'm hoping to find things to recover to um like I would like to take things out of the burrow you're, and bring them to the scavenger. people around. <sighs> yes. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm a very you work with a group? No, not anymore. Um, hmm. I work by myself, and I try to help people. That's really it. I didn't realize there were people there. If there are people that live there, I can't scavenge. I have to trade. And then I have to have things to trade for. So I'm a, I'm a little bit blindsided. I'm sorry. Uh, didn't mean to come off... Well, no, you're fine. Uh, ungrateful. What do you... Where did you... Where did you hear about this place if, if if not from the, where did you hear about this place? <laughs> hold on <laughs> you got it Neil we believe in you hey hey <laughs> and where'd you hear about this place if not from the people inside it I didn't even know there was a borough here until very recently I the information I got was just an un like an unspoiled borough I thought we were going to discover it, I guess is the word I would look, use. Oh, okay, no. Oh, it... Um, uh, probably not. It sounded like from the person who gave me the information that they had only just set up, like they'd only just arrived. But you're saying that they've been there a while. I haven't been there. I just know from rumors and, and communications and such. You know, the usual trade. It's no problem. A new burrow is a ho hopeful new chance to find things that 
are useful to us. Things that I can bring to the farms to help them grow better. Um, uh, uh, you see, like, the guy kind of, like, has a very, like, visible, like, uh, um, look to his face. He says, yeah, I was told there was some kind of magical stuff in there. Sully crosses his arms. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking for fertilizers and magic. Well, just the magic stuff, really. No, you're looking for... It points at Sully. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for untainted seeds, really. Of course, like, high-quality fertilizer from before the sprouting would be great, but untainted seeds would be the best. And you're going to take the seeds that are safe in the vault, outside of the vault, to try to grow uh, where they can be tainted? Yes. Because inside the vault, they do nobody any good. The skeletons of humans are not going to be thankful for the unspoiled seeds. Hmm. There's sometimes ways of protecting plants. My people used to do that. Yeah, with magic, you say? He... Uh, roll a psychology for me. Yes, please. <laughs> Wait, no, that sounds like you have more than the basic. Ah, I've already rolled it. (laughs) (laughs) He lies. (laughs) Come on, don't do me like this. All right, all right. That's a 30 on a 65 check. So that's a hard success. Oh, um, yeah, this guy was like 100% into magics. And not only was it him and his people into magics, they were clearly shady magics because he feels obviously very uncomfortable um, thinking about it. like. Just the thought of kind of like some of the stuff he's done is obviously like he kind of gets a bit of a bead of a sweat. He doesn't look anybody in the eye because his eyes are kind of squinting. Like his shoulders suddenly become quite stiff. Um, Like, yeah, he is uncomfortable with the subjects um, and he doesn't like whatever he's done in the past. Look, it's just going to be hard to convince the people that have it in the vault that it's going to be better used outside of the vault. There are, you know, they're scavengers too, most likely. They're trying to take what they found and make a living themselves from it. However, they might also recognize that if you don't take it today, it'll be here for the people tomorrow. Do you need it now? Is it the time for that? You're taking something from a vault. Look, we don't even know what's there. We don't know who's there or how long they've been there. We've all got conflicting info. And what do you have to trade? Do you have anything to trade them for magic? Me? (laughs) No, I... uh, 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 No. I... I've got knowledge and skills that apparently would have lined up with the things that they do. Uh. Oh, there's definitely like it's not <laughs> intense, but like Sully takes like a like a half a step back. It's just like he's he seems to be readjusting himself, but when he's done, he's like moved back a little bit. <laughs> uh, you can see that Asta kind of like turns and looks at you, and he says, L- "Look, I I don't practice that anymore. Right? That was that was a long time ago." You do what you have to do to survive. That's what we're all doing out, out here. Yeah. Uh, talking about surviving, uh, Lark, you were running away things. Roland was with you. Um, are you going to be okay? Um, Roland just told me to talk to the two of you because he knew one of you. You... And like, uh, like they point at you, hmm. uh, and uh, that's all. <laughs> that's all I know. <sighs> okay. Uh... All right. Well, here's where I'm at. Sully, it sounds like there's more than just seeds at the vault. That's very unfortunate for all of us. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> I'll help you get your seeds or whatever. But just try to take some untainted seeds back to the vault if you can from whatever grows. Of course, my... Uh, <laughs> Lark pulls out a few seeds out of their apple and, like, walks up to you and holds it up in, in one Great, hand. Great, there we go. <laughs> now we can go home. You don't even have to go to the vault. You got all you need. 
Uh, Sully genuinely gives gives you like a like a I don't even know what to call this look. The look of like, fuck are you talking about, dude? <laughs> like, uh, oh the oh come the fuck on. Look, there you go. <laughs> I've never traded for magic before, so I don't exactly know how it works, eh? So just uh, so you're aware, I might uh, not be able to help so much with the magic trade uh, thing. I that's. I'll, you know, do my best, but... Let's hope... Let's hope that everything is there. Maybe it's one of them really big borrows we keep hearing about, you know? One that has uh, magics and food and seas and technology. I mean, isn't that some of the excitement? That we don't know what's there. I mean, also some of the terrifying fear, that some of that terrifying fear that we're all being led into a trap somehow. Or you're uncovering something that's safe without your involvement. And putting it at risk. Maybe. So at least go see them. I have no problem with any of this. Uh, Sully, like, kneels down and takes the apple core, I guess, that uh, Lark gave him. <laughs> and he's like, um, yes, uh, these are good uh, to be scattered around, but uh, farmers need something more actionable. Uh, corn, potatoes, uh salad heads and stuff like that. Something that grows in a cyclical year cycle that they can work with. But these are good. Uh, Always be sure to throw them somewhere where they might actually get to grow in peace from the taint. From the sprouting. Uh, um, Luck's gonna pull out a tiny little potato out of the bag and hold it up to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like all the potatoes that are around. Yeah. Uh, it's not talking to you. It's not a dark <laughs> colour. It's Definitely a potato. Uh, while it has not been affected heavily, I believe that it is changing or has been changed a little bit. I believe it's growing slower or giving us less or giving us more of something we don't want. There's something wrong with a lot of the crops. They don't grow like the books say they should grow. I would like to get some untainted seeds to people again. You can see that, like, Aster is, like, beginning to walk away and he stop, like, turns around and you can see that he's very carefully lifting his leg over it. He's, like, obviously knows there's cracks in the ground and, and stuff like that and he's like, being careful to walk over them. And he kind of, like, points both his fingers towards you, like, finger gun styles, like, how about we walk and talk? We're burning daylight here. Fine by me. Um, Lark, uh, do you want to come with us? It sounds like you were running yeah. away from something, and if Roland uh, was helping you, <laughs> Lark points over to uh, probably like some remains of the of the <laughs> crest that, that are still laying yeah. around. <laughs> yeah, as you kind of like walk onto the street a little bit, yeah, yeah, you can look up and see like the obvious kind of like uh, like silver birch and like red bulbousness that kind of like blown out the back a little bit up the road. Yeah, yeah, um, those. If you don't want to be alone, I understand that. And I'm sure Roland has ways to find me again if he saw me. I think so. I... Can I come with you? Of course. Any friend of Roland is a friend of mine. He seems to say that a little bit bitterly. <laughs> Uh-oh. There's history here. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, they, they put... The, after the comments earlier, we're talking about the potato. They like rub some of the soil of the potato and then put it back in the backpack. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll feed you potatoes. They're just not the potatoes our great, great like our ancestors grew up with. Like that's... Oh, they no. had these huge potatoes. They called them melons. Potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like as as you like begin to make your way along this road that kind of like heads in an easterly direction which leads towards that kind of like large mountainous cliff end um, at the end of the the still lake um, you're probably it probably is like a 20 minute walk um, OT probably wasn't too far from accurately gauging how far this was um, as you are walking and as you're coming to the end of your walk I would like the three of you to either make a spot hidden or a listen check. I'm going to do a spot hidden. Rolled an 85, so that's a Got no. <laughs> 36, success. We'll say that I have my drone out. I'm, I, 
I've pulled my goggles down and the drone disconnects from the backpack and flies up and is, he's looking for radio signals and such to guide us somewhere. Okay. Um, that's why I don't notice things. <laughs> yeah, that's a really that's a really good like thing. Like you you start traveling on the road and as you send OT up into the air, like they kind of direct you to go down like this kind of like slightly narrower lane that comes off of the main road um, and if it looks like if you continue down the main road there'd be like much bigger buildings coming into view like um, multi-story buildings like offices and old homes and such like and apartment blocks um, but he OT guides you down to one side and you're kind of busy listening to the signals that you are being given and paying attention to the little overhead display of where you should be going that you completely miss what's uh, obviously right in front of Lark um um Sully, you don't spot this really at all um, until it is basically you're in it. Um, but I think that maybe Lark may notice this and, and point this out before. Who knows? It's up to Lark. <sighs> Ahead of you, at the end of this kind of narrow road that twists and turns through the forest, you don't hear anything approaching through the forest. You see, like, bits of Zelata's grace everywhere that kind of, like blue vines and purple leaves often denote that there is something weird or magical eldritch happening in the area it's kind of everywhere actually the further you walk the kind of more intense that it becomes you can definitely see that some of those three petaled flowers just closed but kind of maybe getting closer to you the closer that you kind of get to your destination ahead of you you see that there is this chain link fence and a gate the chain link fence is covered in all sorts of ivies and climbing vines and you can see that it has fallen down in areas where trees have been knocked down. You can see that the gate looks like it's been torn open. And Lark, the first thing that you spot as you kind of all turn around this corner is that the road that leads, that you're on, that leads through the gate and straight forward into this large, like, Mountain that has like this tunnel, this entrance way that has been like put into it, and you can see that there is like a um, a couple of very big, heavy, like iron-looking doors that are slightly ajar. Although that pathway is completely clear, you notice that amongst some of the high-grown grasses and amongst some of the rusted-out cars and the small building that's there that kind of looks like a very small hut where only a person could maybe stand, it's right close to the gate you notice that there is a lot of red amongst the greens and the yellows and the greys. You notice that there is a lot of humanoid shapes. Yep, definitely humans that are lying in the ground, partially hidden by cars and broken tarmac and cement and hidden by bushes. You can see, and you can probably count very, very quickly maybe six people that are lying outside this complex. When you say there's red, did you mean in the grass? Yep, as if splashes of blood are everywhere. So it's it's like fairly fresh. Yes. Th there's something over there. I think that's blood. And people... As you will look at the nearest body that Lark is pointing to... You see their foot twitch. You said one of the corpses was twitching. Yeah. Yes. Lark is going to take steps back, trying to get behind the, the tall dudes. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you notice that Asta kind of immediately takes a step as he notices that you're, you're coming back towards him. Like, yeah, he kind of instinctively, like, pulls out his gun and, like, takes half a step in front of you just to, like, begin to, like, shield you from whatever ahead because he notices that you're backing up like mm -mm, okay all right well <laughs> i guess i'll step in from where sully is standing uh can he like do they just look like corpses or do they look like something um are you guys getting any closer uh, if the foot's only twitching and there's no actual real movement or shuffling going on then I think uh, Sully with a raised shotgun is gonna like move to get a better angle at the bodies. But yep. uh, Sully is not a dumb man. He looks around before he starts moving, making sure he doesn't step on or into something that would kill him. Sure, take a spot hidden. 
Uh, so I got a 28 on a 50, so that's a... Uh, so that's a success. I just succeeded in a skill check. Do I mark it yes. as um, progressible or whatever it's called? Yes. So if you ever get any successes, you are supposed to be marking them for improvement, which we would do during the improvement phase. All right. So, um, Sully, with your uh, spot hidden success, um, you begin to make your way up towards where the gates are and you begin to spot that there are kind of six people that are laying hidden amongst all the stuff. The pathway is quite clear and you focus in on the body that seems to have twitched um, and there is definitely something different about them compared to the rest. The rest are clearly very obviously dead. They've been torn to pieces. You can see that like one of them is missing a leg. You can see that some of them have weapons that they are holding on to but obviously was not successful. Um, the body that you end up seeing that has uh, begun to twitch as you kind of get to the very, like, the gate itself, um, you notice that it is this uh, younger woman. She has very shortly cropped blonde hair. Um, you can see that there's, like, blood splatters all over her body. She's wearing, like, very tight-fitting clothes um, and she has what's like a very big machete, like, in one of her hands and it looks like, you know, she has been, like, torn to shreds across her chest, across her stomach, across her legs. But yeah, she looks a mess. Um, for Lark, who managed to get an extreme success on their spot hidden, you notice that this person is definitely breathing. You can just see the rise in the floor of the chest, even though it's quite shallow. Um, you notice that. You also notice that the other bodies here are definitely not moving. There doesn't seem to be any signs of life about them at all. And you can see that the two large iron doors that are kind of in that kind of like tunnel within the mountainside, you can see that they're slightly adjacent jar and you can you think you see objects moving in the darkness beyond but it's like maybe a person maybe a creature even though you had a um, an extreme success the fact that you can see there's anything moving in there at all being it's quite a distance off you know that there is something going on in there yeah uh, lark is going to pull out uh, their hand sickle <laughs> from their backpack <laughs> and uh, just for clarification was the um, the woman who was still breathing, was that the same person that was also where the foot was twitching? Yes. Yes. It's the one that like she is the you owner kind of pointed of the out. <laughs> yes, she is the owner of Twitchy Foot. Um Ralph, is there anything that you're doing? I want to figure out what killed them, basically, or if I've seen anything like this before. Because this seems very extreme. I guess the first obvious question is, this is clearly an animal attack. Like, these are not machete slices or gunshot wounds. These are quite clearly creature attack. You cannot tell whether it's a biological animal or a biological plant or a mixture yeah. of the two. Was it fauna or f flora? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I'd say, Ralph, it's either going to be a natural world or it'll be um, a medicine check or a mythos check. Library news. I'm sorry, mythos <laughs> check? Yeah, so we have uh, Yamal mythos, which is our equivalent of um, Eldritch knowledge. Ah, okay, yes. You said library use, Yamal no. No. mythos. It's mythos, natural medicine, world. or natural world. Medicine and natural world. This is going to sound really stupid, but it's the higher of the three. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want a high skill. A skill with a higher point. Yeah, I know. But I, I do I need went to know it. what you're rolling. Um, it, it's a 59 versus 15, so it's a failure. Yeah, but what's uh, the mythos roll? roll. Okay. Um, yeah, nothing. Nothing is coming to mind at all. Yeah. Um, like... You probably could guess that it is some sort of plant attack. Um, these don't look massively like bears, which aren't massively common in the area, which would be your like, oh, it's a bear attack. We don't have bears here. Uh, Polar <laughs> so bears. Kind of like, mm. In the Alps. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, like, you don't think this area is renowned for its bears, so this is probably some sort of plant attack, but anything beyond that, you've got nothing, buddy. The, the body's still breathing. 
She's alive? <coughs> oh. <clears throat> uh, Sully, like, starts moving closer to the, the lady. He's scanning around with his gun and looks back at the party. So, yeah, he looks over at the crew and just like, all right, uh, s- cover me, please. And he's going to throw his shotgun to the ground to his side, takes off his backpack, and he goes into, like, one of the easier access... No, I, yeah, he throws off his backpack and just goes into a pocket and grabs out some bandages. And he's going to start tending to the lady. Didn't you say that she, she looked like she was ripped apart or something? She had a massive... Yeah, it looks like she has, like, really deep, like, cuts and gashes okay. in her that are not clean in any way, shape, or form. Okay. I, I guess, like, uh, as soon as Lark sees that... Um, Uh, Sully is like attempting to assist the person like Lark puts the hand sickle back in the in the um, in the slot where it goes and uh, approaches from behind and like looks over his shoulder Um, Asta would definitely come with um, and Asta is kind of like aiming and pointing the gun and just doing a really good like visual check of the area to make sure that you two are safe um yeah, I think that's that's probably what Astra is up to. Um, yeah, as you approach the girl, like you can see her eyes are beginning to like. She is like focusing. You can see that there is like tears are streaming down her face, um, and she occasionally just like coughs and like she's trying to speak. Um, you can see that she's trying to move, but that's just making everything so much worse. Yeah, uh, I think Sully uh, gets out probably some kind of pocket knife and cuts away the cloth that's like covering up the wounds and he starts mm-hmm. assessing the damage and doing his best to stop the bleeding uh, and I'm pretty sure he would also say something along the lines of like stop trying to talk focus on your breathing focus on your breathing that's all you need to do right now take a first aid check for me don't fuck me don't fuck me don't fuck me can this be assisted does, is that yep. Uh, if you assist, um, then that gives him a bonus die, which in this system basically lets you re-roll um, or lets you roll the tens dice twice and you take the higher result. Yeah. All right. Uh, lower result. Better results. Yeah. All right. Uh, I rolled an 82, so I really I do appreciate it. So I I rolled a 82 and a 2. Damn. So, uh, 2 is an extreme success, so yes. you can mark that as a to improve Mm -hmm. Um, on an extreme success with the help of Lark who kind of like helps tip the head back a little bit make sure that the kind of whatever blood is in the chest is uh, in the the throat has been like taken out and like yeah you begin to like wrap some of these things you remember that oh crap I actually have some sort of disinfectant and you kind of like begin to take care and wrap and bind some of these wounds up Um, between the two of you you roll her onto her side and she doesn't seem to be letting go of her machete at all it's like her knuckles are like bone white um, clasped on it Um, and she's still like breathing it exceptionally ragged but she is doing much better um i won't have you roll a d4 for healing at this point because the health is kind of irrelevant um so yeah she just begins to take some very like ragged breaths and she says saluna she, she's alone where is she you see uh, the woman like lifts her head and she kind of like nods in the direction of the um, complex inside the mountain. What attacked you? <laughs> there, there were things that came out the vents. <laughs> we had been here a little while and we thought we were safe. But they... It came out the vents and it started attacking us. Some of us ran out, but it came after us. Then it went back in after Saluna. You, you have to help her. Okay. We're gonna help her. We're gonna help her. I just have to ask you a question, a couple more questions. Uh, so I'm just going to look around. Does it look like the people were moved or dragged here or does it look like this is where they made their stand? Um, it looks like some of them tried uh, a last stand. Like you can see that the way that some of them have been like thrown backwards, they have like guns pointed 
roughly in the direction. You can see that there are clearly like spent uh, cases all around. You can see that there's impacts on the wall and on the door and on the floor from weapon shots that were fired at that kind of like entrance way. Um, so yes, yeah, some of them at least tried to make a last stand here. Uh, okay, but nobody was dragged or moved around. Like this creature was not trying to hide them. Not as far as you can tell, no. Okay. You said there was like a little guard outpost kind of thing? Yeah, it's just like big enough for a person to sit or stand in. Yeah. Uh, Sully's going to point to that thing and say, uh, we should mo- probably move her over there, away from the grass and the plants. It will give her a better place to uh, recover. Uh, the intention just to give her a place to like kind of sit so that she can defend herself if something comes. When was this? When when did this happen? <sighs> Maybe 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, uh, Sully looks back over the group and uh, he kind of like, uh, without, he's asking, but with like a kind of a commanding tone. All right, uh, so does somebody want to stay here with her or are we all intending to go in together? The, the the door was slightly open and it looked like there were things moving, I think. I don't I don't think I want to go in there. I I think I would stay here. I understand. I understand. I don't want to put you in any danger. Are you handy with that? Uh he looks at your blade. Sickle. Uh, uh well, I survived until now. All right, Ralph, Asta. Uh do you want to cover the rear, or are you coming in? I, uh... will be right behind you, eh? Fantastic. Um, Sully's gonna <laughs> take off his backpack, and he's gonna put it in the, like, little room that the lady's in. I'm assuming I'm assuming there's space for it. If not, he just... I don't think so. Okay, okay, okay. Um, it really is only big enough for someone to stand or maybe sit in and, like, her legs are poking up the end. If you put the bag in there, it's yeah. going to take up, like, yeah. half the room. He basically takes off his backpack and leans it against the, the shed. And... Oh, is it like a night guard thingy? Little hut? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he leans it against the shed and night guard thingy. Uh, and he looks over at Lark. Please keep that very, very safe. But I do not want this on my back if something's attacking us. Um, he uh, has Lark a, nods. Yeah, he has a lot of stuff in his pockets, and he makes like he does like a pat down, just making sure, like, yeah, I've got extra shells. <laughs> I take the rifle with me in case that becomes important. It's like doing like a little bit of inventory before he starts heading out. Um, you see, Asta, like he looks at what you've done and just kind of like shrugs and rolls his eyes like he has a feeling he takes like the side bag he has off and he, he puts it uh, next to yours um, and he says to Lark Lark if anything happens to me there's a place not far from here it's called Diablera it's one of them collective places I've got a friend there can you make sure it gets there uh, did he say a name to who to give it to in Diablera at Diablera yeah, uh, his name's Henry. He came from the same place that I came from. Yeah. Uh, just taking notes, because uh, I'm imagining Sully has a much better uh, n- uh, memory than I thought. <laughs> All right, uh, Sully, with his shotgun ready, starts moving forward. Uh, Do you not need to leave anything, Ralph? Uh, no. I'm going to put my VR headset down and begin recording. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming with me. It's coming with me. I'm assuming, Sully, you're in the lead? Unfortunately, yes. I'm more beside <laughs> you than yeah. behind you. I'm hoping... Okay, Asta, some... Asta will take the rear then. Asta will take the rear. I'm, um, hoping, I'm hoping you have some VR night vision bullshit in your goggles. Yeah, it, it's... It, it, it. So, yes. Kind of. But not... <laughs> an extreme amount like you're thinking okay. like it's yeah, not okay, like okay. military just, just night bit, vision yeah. this is like you know how vr headsets can see infrared light it's just basically a flashlight that no one else can see except the goggles um yeah so the pair of you make your way up to the doors um astra's behind you with a rifle uh which he obviously has aimed a little bit high um he's he's quite tall himself but like he still needs to aim over your heads um and he's he's definitely ready um as you get to the doors, 
I'd like you to either make a listen check or a spot hidden check. Um, Ralph, you may do the spot hidden with advantage because you do, ha- sorry, with a bonus die because you do have that little, little extra something in your VRs. Ooh! Ooh, Ten baby! Now you 15. can mark it off too. Yay! 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 Extreme success. That's your first success. Woo! Yay! Baby. Yay! <laughs> I did it. Yep, don't forget to mark off your spot hidden. Um, so, Sully, you got a, what kind I, of success? I got a hard success. Mm-hmm. And Ralph got an extreme. As you look into the darkness, you can see what looks like a very long corridor that like begins to dip down. You can see that there are pipes and electrical conduits that seem to be running the length of this. You can see that off to the right-hand side, there seems to be this room, which was not evident at all from where you were originally standing, but now you're here. You can look right, and as you're looking around, you can see that there is just what looks like blood is smeared along the walls and along the ground. You can see lots of footprints in the blood as people have obviously been running through. Um, on the right-hand side in that room that you saw, you see this kind of older looking lady she has um like lots and lots of gray hair that's tied back into um into a braid that's kind of like tucked into her shirt and you can see it because of your extreme and really good successes um she's wearing what looks like a very tight shirt um and you can see that she is like holding two machetes like one very defensively and one kind of in front of her you can see that she obviously has a stance as somebody who knows what the fuck she's doing you can tell that she's obviously spotted and heard you come in because her hearing isn't trash um she heard the sounds behind her she kind of tips her head a little bit but begins to focus again on the vent that's right in front of her and then as you kind of take a few steps in look down the corridor and see literally nothing there and you look into this room that has a table and a couple of chairs and what looks like a couple of lockers with like clothes hanging there you see movement in that vent The vent cover itself has fallen off long since. And you can see that there is this creature that is long and tendril-like. It's very pale. Um, You can see that it has this, like, big flower on it um, that is kind of this dark pinkish kind of colour. And you can see that it has, like, glowing blue veins all across it. You can see that it kind of, like, begins to slowly make its way out and you see the woman kind of jump up and slash forward with her machete you can see that it kind of as she jumps up and slashes forward it kind of like knocks against the side of the venting and you can see the vent kind of dent a little bit but she kind of drops down and lands perfectly well on her feet Um, and she kind of like you see the plant kind of like fall back a little bit but then begin to like again like creep its way forward what do you want to do? Um, if I... Sully has a much better experience with shotguns than Aether does. <laughs> uh, do I feel like it would be safe to shoot one of my... Um, we had a conversation about this. I don't know how much you remember about it. His improvised shotgun shells? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would he feel safe shooting that above her head through the vent? Like... Uh, you would probably want to ask her to duck and get much closer. Yeah. All right. Uh, then, like... Sully, uh, okay, uh, let's then first just say Sully looks to what the other two are doing. Um, uh, Aster is behind you. He probably yeah. hasn't even seen what you're doing. I don't have any game saving ideas at the moment, so uh, still assessing right, then, the situation. I right, just just wanted to make sure I wasn't. Uh, yeah, no, go ahead. He moves like shockingly quickly and surely, like the gun trained at the vent. He starts moving forward and he just uh, quickly says, just Miss Duck, as he like uh, starts moving into the room. Uh, she kind of like, crouches down and rolls to the side and still ends up in like a fighter stance. Yeah. He like, as soon as he's like, he feels like she's out of the way, he's just gonna blast a single uh, shotgun shell at the vent and okay. r- rack another one as soon as he's done. Okay, yep, go ahead and make your attack roll. All right, that would be a uh, firearms, a rifle, or a shotgun. And that is uh, an extreme success. Jesus. All right, all right, who did you pay? <laughs> um, so Why are you getting all these successes? Who did you pay? So I, I happen to know the guys who made uh, Quest Portal. <laughs> Insert uh, uh, ad spot here. <laughs> Oh, God, no. (laughs) 
<laughs> save it for the end. Save it for the end. <laughs> no, no, I, I rolled a 15 on our 75, so that's an extreme success. Okay, yeah. Uh, absolutely, you blap the shit out of it. Um, it kind of like, as you kind of like lift and aim and get it, like kind of as it was like really the whole petal face, uh, sorry, the whole face of the flower um, was kind of like beginning to make its way out of the vent. You kind of put your shotgun up, one good shot. You see like the whole thing just like shatter into pieces as like these small pieces of um, uh, shell, or sorry, of um, your your shot just going to kind of like spray out and you see it kind of like being pushed back. You see that there's a lot of like dinks and tinks as it kind of bounces off the metal of the um, vent. And you hear this kind of like... <sighs> And you see this kind of dark yellow pollen that begins to just like eep out, sorry, like begin to like seep out of the the flower that you have just destroyed. Uh, the woman grabs you by the shoulder and runs out of the room and throws close the door. Yeah, she kind of like closes the door behind her and like she kind of like leans forward, like her hands on her knees, like just kind of like trying to breathe. Um, both machetes still clutched in her hands. Oh, fuck. Ugh. Thanks. I'm assuming you're Saluna. Guilty as charged. Pleasure to meet you all. Uh, unfortunate circumstances. Do you believe there yeah. are anybody else inside the burrow? Uh, she shakes her head and she says no. Then uh, this, Sully this is me. already retreating out of the door when she says no. No reason to stay here any longer. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm getting away from this plant thing. Do you know how much shit is in here? There's so much stuff we need to rescue. We can't just leave it. Yes, but your friend is outside. You might want to give them a pep talk. They are very hurt. Shit. All right, all right. Um, And she kind of like follows you guys outside. Yeah. Uh, once we're outside, like Sully, like re racks the shotgun. He's like already in, uh, <laughs> like for setup mode as they start walking towards the uh, the shed. Yeah, um, you see that she kind of like um, I'm gonna stay behind. Puts like a hand over her mouth as she sees like the carnage like, in like full daylight out here. Um, you can see that she just like is taking it in, but she sees her her friend who's in the guardhouse, and she just kind of like bolts her way across, um, moving at surprising speed for one uh, who's who's quite old. Um, and she kind of like drops to one knee next to the girl, and they begin to like speak very quietly. Um, and as soon as the girl tries to speak, she just kind of like the older woman like shakes her head like. No, no. It's okay. You did the one thing you needed to do. You survived. It's okay. Just breathe. And she kind of like... She kind of like uh, takes off like whatever jacket she's wearing. She lays it over the girl. Um, and you can see that her hair is like definitely quite long and quite thick. Um, and she kind of like turns to look at you all and she looks at uh, Lark and she's like... Thank you for taking care of my friend. Lark just nods and uh, then leaves them be. <laughs> then Aster will stay with you. Um, he doesn't think you guys splitting up is a smart idea. All right. Uh, once she has had her uh, like a little like reunion with a, a girl, Sully, like, all right, uh, you say there's a lot of things to rescue from this place. Of course. That's why we're here. How long have you guys been here before we arrived? And so they says this as they start moving back to the group. Assuming the rest of the group can hear it. Yeah, yeah. I won't make you roll a listen check for this. Everyone can hear. Um. <laughs> yeah, we've been here three or four weeks now, I think. Which kind of does tie up with what Ralph or what you know. Yeah. Like. Would you have... Did you guys see any... Um, seat storages while you were looking around yeah there there wasn't much um a few basics a couple of different types of potatoes carrots um sort of root vegetables really did it look like somebody had taken or was it just a small storage she shakes her head and she says when we got here is <sighs> well kind of accidentally busted the lock getting in but it's perfect. No one had set foot in here for however long this place has been. <sighs> uh, 
Sully is definitely thinking to himself, like, and then in three weeks, something's already in there. You guys fucked up. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, he does not say that out loud. Uh, yeah, uh, once the group is together again, um, Sully, like, gets in front again, I guess. Fucking shotguns there. They are the preacher weapon. <laughs> um, Asta says... One of your scouts found me. I was working at a local farm. They said you had magics here. And she nods and she says, Yeah, um, this place, it's been on our radar for a little while. Someone had a feeling, an inclination. Some of us have blessings. And like an ancestral memory is how they described it. They knew this place was here. Um, and we looked around and, yeah, this place used to belong to a, a group. Um, they were called Vale Lake and they were preparing for the sprouting. Apparently they knew it was coming. There's seeds in here, there's magical tomes and books, there's relics that can hold back some of the plants and we were studying it. And then everything went wrong. But maybe that's a story for another day. We can just get in. There's some very specific things in here that we need. And once we have them, we can abandon this place to the plants. Do you have any idea what that thing in the vent is? Uh, would Sully have recognized it in any way? Uh, you can take a history check or you can take a natural world check. And Ralph, you can do the same. <laughs> uh, I got Seriously, a, dude. I got an eight. That's a hard success. 91 versus 30. Fail. Um, unfortunately, Ralph, this is nothing that you've ever come across or anything that you've really heard of. Um, yeah. And Sully... Yeah, um, this is a uh, a pollen cloud devourer. It's known to hide in um, like small confined spaces like pipes or vents. Um, you know that uh, usually they're kind of like pink or blue. Um, they'll either have pink um, petals with like blue veins that glow or they'll have blue petals with pink veins that glow. Um, but either way, you know often when they are destroyed or when they have like a perfect face on view at somebody's face they would just um and spray them down with pollen which will eventually just give the person breathing problems and end up killing them and slowing them down um so yeah it's a pretty bad plant to to tangle with um on your uh, extreme success um it was sorry on your hard success um you would know that the wounds sustained by the people on the outside don't match, match. with no. the mo of this plant. I know, I know. I like, like when you were describing the vet creature, I'm like, that does not sound like something that would chase them out of the <laughs> place and rip open the doors um, at uh, bar doors. Or yeah, the fuck that was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. As we start like advancing into the um, uh, burrow, uh, so it's just gonna real quick ask like, um, Saluna. The things in the vents, it doesn't really chase people outside. Do you know what it was that got outside? Uh, she shakes her head and she says, Nope. I managed to take down most of these vent creatures. I saw lots of people running outside and heard gunshots, but I was a little too busy not being killed by that other thing. <sighs> All right. What would you choose, eh? If you could choose to preserve anything in here, what would you prioritize? There's a book. It's called... It was written by a woman in the early 1800s. Um, came from a place called Lien. Her name was Seraphine. She... She seemed to know about all the weird stuff that was coming before it happened. Yeah, it happened 80 years ago, but she was alive more than 200 years ago, 300 years ago almost, blimey. She has magical knowledge that's 
read the globe. If there's anything in here, anything at all, that could maybe save our world, maybe even get it slightly back so that we don't have to fear for the life of our kids, yeah, it's that book I want to see. All right, let's find it then, I guess. Yep. Aster nods as he's like following you all in, and he says, That's good. That's the sort of thing I hoped you would have, like your scout said. And as you're walking down this corridor, um, as you kind of make that steep uh, descension down, uh, you see that there is a door ahead of you and it's open and it leads to kind of like this big empty kind of chamber ahead of you um, that seems to have like a series of doors right in front of you, these massive like metal doors that look like very difficult to open. You can see buttons everywhere. Strangely enough, the lights are all still on. You can tell that there's still power going on. And the further in and the further down you go, it seems to be getting like much, much, much colder. Um, there's like a giant door ahead of you. There's a giant door off to your left-hand side and another one off to the right um you can see that the one to the left is open um but the other two aren't i'm gonna hold you guys here all right lark what are you doing outside i think lark is mostly like um definitely like uh the first thing they did was like look around the the, the little hut they uh, like for for spots where they can hide that isn't necessarily a bush <laughs> You notice that coming through the gate is what looks like a vine of Zelata's Grace. Its blue kind of vine is like quite thin and then rapidly gets thicker and thicker until it's about the thickness of a human arm. It's probably probably much bigger than you've seen one, actually. The, um, um, just the, the gate, is that the, the entrance to the premise or the gate that... The, the the guys went into the borough. Um so into into the um into the premise itself. Okay. Um because the the entrance to the mountain complex are just definitely doors. They're like solid doors. Um yeah, like you see the um the vine just kind of making its way through. You can see that there are the leaves get thicker and thicker and you can suddenly see that there is what well, looks like a really big flower on top of it and it seems to be snaking its way through the gate and then abruptly turns and starts heading towards you. Oh, they're, they're definitely trying to like back away in like in a way that they can get out of the way from of the thing like uh, beh either behind the, the, the little hut. Um, you could definitely roll a climb check to get on top of this um, like tiny hut. little like security hut thingy yeah. um, like to get yourself off the ground. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead and roll a climb for me. It's fairly easy. 64. Wait, hang on. Nope, I failed. As you like think about climbing up, um, you kind of do a, a precursory like climb and just like yeah, decide that it's just not worth like it's a little bit unstable. You're worried about maybe falling through the ro uh, roof itself and you just come down. And Salata's Grace kind of stops and curls up very, very close to you until the plant is. Very, very, very close. And then it does something that you've never seen before. You see the leaves pop open until you can see that very, very centre of the plant, what looks like half a sphere that has lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of little holes in it. And it starts to make noise. And every time that kind of bassy noise comes in, you can see this kind of half sphere kind of like vibrate and shift and point out and come back in again for those of us in the real world this looks a lot like a speaker <laughs> and you hear noise come out and you hear are we sure they're even coming here i can't feel my feet man if the plant says they sent aster this way then they'll be here you could get your first apop or reconsidering your life choices the fuck is an apop it's apoptosis. It's programmed cell death, ridding the body of parts that aren't needed anymore. It's what the sickles call it anyway. Helps. Helps to cope? Nah, to understand why we're doing what we're doing. Oh fuck, he's here. That's Aster, right? If you trust that you planted the root, then it's time. <sighs> Nazir, I call upon... You hear nothing but static. And then suddenly it cuts back. So what's next? It's just one more in Diablera, and then the abage of light can begin. 
and then the petals close around the speaker. And you suddenly see that the whole limb that came out to reach you slowly begins to turn brown and black and disappear into like this fine dust. Could I have you make a sanity roll, please? Don't stare straight at the anomalies. 61. Uh. <laughs> That's a success. A success. Uh, then yes. you only take one point of sanity damage. <laughs> uh, um, d- d- Lark isn't sure what, what exactly that was, but they heard the name of Aster. And uh, so they're going to look into the, like, look around at like to the to the gate is like is the entire vine completely gone like disintegrated yeah like you kind of look you can't see where it originally came from you just noticed it was coming through the gate but yeah Mm -hmm. there's this kind of like fine black powder that is beginning to be like blown away in the cold wind yeah uh so um lark is going to take their sickle and uh look into the hut and uh tell the the woman inside um i'm i need to go inside she nods, um, like she's trying to save her energy, but she nods. Yeah, and I um, think Lark is going to close the door and go inside uh, as quietly as they can and try to sneak after the people. <laughs> no, well, not sneak, but <laughs> they don't know what... Say, that requires a death check, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just just uh, be quiet and make sure that, that uh, they... Their their own noises don't overshadow the noises of the people that are in front of them, so they can find them in case this is uh, splitting up or whatever. They don't know what they're expecting on the um, to look like. Yeah, I'll, I'll still make you make a stealth check. Okay. Um, like it's just the difference between like how well you've managed to hide your sounds so that you don't alert and can still hear, um, versus to them just absolutely not knowing here. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety. That's a fail. <laughs> God damn it. I'm trying to help y'all get like improvement roles that aren't ethel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, you managed to make your way down there. It's not quite as stealthy as you'd want it to be, but you can definitely still hear like the four of them ahead. Um, you can like basically see um like as you kind of like creep up um you definitely like see Asta like turn around to look at you sees that you're coming and there's like returns his attention to um, what's happening in front of him um so yeah the five of you um are very very close to this like big open area where yeah there's a giant metal door off to the left um which seems to be open and ajar um you can see there is a giant metal door in front of you which is still closed and the same to the one to the right um you can see in this area that there is evidence of very 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 dead um like plant devourer creatures um that have obviously like some of them leaning out of vents some of them are just laying dead on the floor um can y'all take a listen check for me, please? Ooh, a success. Woohoo! <laughs> you can mark an improvement. <laughs> so the young un amongst us manages to uh, pass their listen check. How about the uh, the two slightly older ones? <laughs> nah. My ears are full of grunt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you hear the sound of, like, something big, like, moving, um, kind of like, scraping or like sliding across like metal um, or floor Um, you hear the sound of what looks what sounds like kind of like scraping screeching noises as if someone has like pushed a table and it hasn't got like proper protection on the floor and it does like noise Um, you hear a little bit of that is a little distance off um, but it feels like it's directly ahead of you Um, uh, Lark is going to uh, hurriedly run up to the group and um, they're going to poke uh, Sully um, and they're going to signal them if they can talk in, like for a second off off to the side. Uh, yeah, uh, Sully looks at you uh, like a hint of surprise. Like, it, it, it's not like a what? But it's just like a <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Like a, a, a small scrunch of the eyebrows. And yeah. then he like just kind of leans in uh, and uh, like... Yeah, off to the side. And then yeah. um, Lark is going to say, I I saw one of the purple plants outside and it... it, it, it uh, I don't know what... It made that sound that, you know, those little um, machines make that the little... 
whatever. The, it made a sound and it sounded like I heard voices on it and the voices were talking that Aster was leading people here and it was a plan that he was planning to bring them here. I think something is wrong. A uh, plant told you this? Yeah. One of the purple ones. The ones that are h harmless. Oh, so not disgrace? Yeah. Well, I think this is... I think this is a... a, um, a trap. And, like, they're trying to repeat as best as they can what they heard. Because <laughs> I do not have it verbatim. We're going to go on the assumption, and we're going to put this out now, mm -hmm. that if you hear recordings from Zalata's Grace, mm -hmm. that you are able to repeat them perfectly. <laughs> it might <Verbatim>. be magic. <laughs> verbatim. Every goddamn word. It might be magic. It might be that you all have extremely good memories. Or it might be that this is how we're going to cope with sharing information. Thank and This you. is how we're going to cope. You're welcome. I appreciate it. So right. in world, you all have fantastic memories when it comes to Zalata Grace recordings. It sounds to me like somebody was trying to ambush Aster. If I'm understanding correctly. You think? It, it might even be... It says the plan... Says. <laughs> I said, was my words. <laughs> Lark said, you said. Uh, <laughs> and th th there were voices, uh, not that there were, I just heard, before I came here, there were noises behind that door. There's definitely something behind it, like chairs being moved backwards. I'm going to say that Asta and um, S Saluna. Not it. Um, that the pair of them have gone to that like open door um, and kind of like as you two are talking, uh, Saluna just kind of like turns to Ralph and says, uh, maybe you guys want to try and check out some of the other doors. It's, we'll clear this out as soon as we can. And once you're in, yeah, whatever. Um, and the pair of them kind of like begin to make their way to try and like open this door a bit wider and like go and search uh, what's inside that part. Quick, Neil, the NPCs are distracted. Get in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and uh, Lark is go uh, going to repeat the same thing to mm. uh, Ralph as well. Or maybe he joined earlier. Who knows? Maybe we yeah, said maybe. this before we had our conversation. Yeah. Okay, so you're thinking something strange is going on with Aster then? I think so. I couldn't see him when we first showed up. I, I just, I couldn't tell something was really weird about it. You couldn't see him? Was he around the corner? Just couldn't focus on him. Couldn't see him, even. I, hard to explain. Too fast? It didn't seem right. He did say that he used to practice magic. Could be that he was doing something, but I don't know why that would affect you, but not the rest of us. All right, well, let's just be really careful, eh? I don't... I don't know who to trust. Uh, this seems weird, so... I've heard of Salada's Grace... Mm, whispering to people, talking to people before. And... People tell me that it tells you the truth. But it is... A plant. And it is part of the whole weird world. So let's not put too much stock in it. But if we were to give it the benefit of the doubt, it sounds to me like whatever is going on here is to do with Aster. Or this thing you heard was way back in the day and Aster isn't Aster anymore. He just says he is. Here's where my uh, here's where my stance on this whole thing is. I have heard there's books down here that are very, I wouldn't say valuable, but you know, important, right? Mm -hmm. They catalog information. I'm not saying that I want this book. Whoever can have it can have it. But if it's important, I I just think we should. 
focus on getting whatever's in here that's important away from whoever may or may not be uh, named by plants at us, you know. Fair. Can I have the three of you please make a spot hidden check? That's a fail. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Oh, Neil. <laughs> oh, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> Ninety-three. Man, if Luck 90s coming were in good. strong once again. Um, <laughs> Sully and Ralph, as you're kind of like really getting into this conversation, um, you fail to notice, um, but Lark does, that it appears as if Esther has been standing at the door for a while listening to you guys. <laughs> Lark's going to look over over to Aster and um, like, I guess in the middle of the conversation that they're, they're doing this thing where they're like, oh, I've been overheard. Mm. <laughs> wait, wait, just stop talking. Speak of <laughs> the devil. And like you right. <laughs> does like intensive eye contact with a person until the others like turn around to notice it. Uh, speaking of the foul plants. Uh... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he has some kind of issue with us cataloging the information. Um, uh, yeah, I think Sully's looking over at Aster at this point. I like the idea that like Ralph has his back to him and doesn't understand what's going on. <laughs> he's behind. Oh no, that he, he's, isn't he, he says that after he notices. <laughs> yeah. He says yeah. that to Aster. Like yeah. Oh yeah, good yeah. point. Good point. Unless oh nice. He notices, you know. He's saying that to the person he's talking about at this point. Like unless he notices. Yeah. Or unless he doesn't, what did, whatever I said, whatever I said. Unless he doesn't want us. Unless he doesn't. Unless he doesn't we have unless a problem with us cataloging. Us cataloging that information. Yeah. Um, Aster takes a few steps forward and he, he definitely still has his rifle in hand. Um, he hasn't like become untense. Um, and he, he, he definitely takes a few steps towards you all. Um, he doesn't seem to be raising his gun. For those of you who are astutely aware of how guns work, he still has the safety on. Um, you can see um, Saluna, who is like rapidly like gathering things together that seem to be important to her. Um, and like you see weird little trinkets. You see like an old horseshoe. Um, you see like what looks like a, a small bracelet with a little bell on it. Like you see lots of weird little things going in here. Um, so she's kind of like busy packing what she thinks are like essential weird things from this place. Um, but Aster like takes a few steps forward and he says, So, Salata's Grace mentioned me. Lark is not going to say anything. <laughs> Are you surprised by that? He looks down and shakes his head. Looks back up. No. Who told you about this place? She tells me she's a scout for places like this. If she could tell there was something weird about me, she had an awful lot of trouble seeing me to start with. I'll put it down to the way there's a situation, you know. What did Delata's Grace say about me? It said you were being set up. He, like, closes his eyes and just mouths the word, fuck. <laughs> did a woman really tell you to come here? He nods. Fuck. I've got a friend. He's based in Diablera. We escaped from this cult when we were younger. There were weird things that had been haunting and following us for a real long time. What did the plant say? They're coming after you. And... Name... God damn it. You seemed to be the trigger to... Whatever they were. They did something. But they were waiting for you. That's about all we know. And then they were going to go after Diablera. Diableria. After my friend. Do you think this whole situation is because they were trying to ambush you? Yeah. Then let's get everything out of here as soon as we can, so no more people have to get hurt. And you can go into details when we're done. Because right. whatever killed those people out there is probably still in here. Right, but I'm not leaving until we find that book, though. Help me open this. And he, like, 
puts the gun on his back, he rushes over and he like tries to open the door that's like directly ahead of where you came in, um, where you heard the, the kind of chairs and everything being moved. Um, and yeah, like he kind of like smashes the button and it kind of like big flashy lights, lots of noise. Um, and the door kind of like very loudly and slowly begins to open. Gun trained on the doorway. You train your gun on the doorway and Asta also like re uh, gets his gun ready so he takes it off of the um, off of safety very quickly. Um, you hear that uh, Saluna has kind of like rushed in like both machetes ready to go just kind of like what the hell are you doing? Um, and you see before you what looks like a very large containment room. You can see that there is um, kind of like tables directly ahead of you and there looks like to be like light shades and, and like little like lamps that are on them. You can see there are books and you can see that there are papers and writing implements and you can see that directly ahead of you there seems to be like this large cage area that has uh, the door that has been opened to it and there are stacks and stacks of shelves that go all the way back so far that you can't see and there's a couple of blinking lights that are coming on. You can see that there are these boxes and weird items but the thing that really quickly draws your attention is that Almost directly ahead of you, there is this small, like, lectern. And on top of this lectern, there is this small, green, very, very old-looking book. And you can see that there is some words written on the front. Um, Could I have um, Sully and Ralph roll a language own, please? Um, In this situation, Lark, I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) Written language is not... (laughs) Um, okay, how did we do, Japs? Oh, boy. I got a 90 on a 76, so that's a fail. I did nicely. I rolled a 69. Nice. Oh, <laughs> nice. nice. Uh, alas, uh, still so a fail. Nice. You failed nice number, nicely. But alas. Um, you can tell that there is, like, something written on the front in a very, very old, like, cursive handwriting, um, but you don't really get enough time to absorb it. And the reason you don't have time to absorb it is because you notice that kind of just behind it that you can see that there are some of the shelves that have been pushed and slid around. It's as if someone has been walking in here in the dark, just accidentally pushing and knocking things over. And what you see before you, about 20 foot in height, is a creature that is kind of made from this grey root-looking thing. Its arms and legs are both the thicknesses of tree trunks. Its head is huge and has like this very reflective mirror-looking face. And as the lights come on and the door opens, this creature has its arms on top of two of these stacks and lifts itself up so it's standing more upright and its entire head only turns around to look at everyone on the other side. Thank you for giving The Sprouting a try. You can find the story of Lark, Ralph and Sully by searching The Sprouting into your podcatcher of choice. This has been a Blighthouse Studio production. Thank you for listening.